I saw in an interview back in 2014, you were talking about the character from NBC, you know, the NBC Sports commercial, and mm -hmm. that you'd like it to become a series. So what have you been, how, what have you been doing <laughs> for six years? <laughs> exactly, what, what took so damn long? No, I, I, the good point, good question. Very, you know, boy, oh boy. And we only got four minutes. How do I, where, where do I start? Where do I stop? Um, yeah, you know, it, basically the, 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 we, we really got down to it one week when me and uh, my, my friends, Brendan Hunt and Joe Kelly, Brendan Hunt is, you know, they're both writers, producers on the show. Brendan plays Coach Beard. We spent a week uh, together in, in Brooklyn and we, just to see, cause I had the, I had this idea. I was like, I was like, oh, this could go bigger. Because the, the, the jump we made from one to two unlocked some things about the character that, that felt like it could go beyond just being, uh, you know, an ad, an ad. And I, and we, and we, it flowed out of us. We wrote like, you know, the pilot, 85% of what, you know, you, you, you got to see on, on Apple TV plus was like what we, we had come up with and with some great, you know, touches that, that, that Bill uh, put on there. And then we even beat out a whole like first season and it was like, oh, this could happen. Then what happened? Then um, Joe and myself helped uh, some other buddies create a show called Detroiters for Comedy Central. Life, I had a kid, I had another kid, you know, like the world was going, you know, through all sorts of changes um, with everything that, that went on in 2015, 2016. And yeah, it wasn't until Bill uh, Lawrence entered, you know, my, my life with an idea for a show that wasn't quite right for us. But he asked, he was like, hey, if you ever have anything, I was like, we have this idea. And he knew the commercials and then, you know, cut to a couple of years after that, more or less. Now here we are, you know, <laughs> hurry up and wait. Right. Isn't that the, the old saying? <laughs> I understand you're an Arsenal fan, uh, which is good. Thumbs up for that. Well done. Um, but I know when the original promos that you were involved in were done, it was with Tottenham. How could you? Why, why did you not? <laughs> uh, hey, you know, a gig's a gig. Um, <laughs> Uh, I was uh, not allowed to help them choose the team, and um, and uh, someone higher up than me was a huge Tottenham fan, um, and so off we off we went. And I I have to say Tottenham was very kind to us, and they were all uh, very very good to us. Um, but then we got to go to a game at White Hart Lane, and Arsenal won that game. So I feel like it all balanced out. Yeah, no, that's okay, isn't it? I mean, if there was, I know you can't reveal very much, but if there was a season two. Um, would you like to actually have Richmond play against Arsenal, and but then wouldn't you want them to lose? <laughs> I would be torn. Yeah. I'd be absolutely torn. It would be like Luke Skywalker fighting Superman. I just wouldn't know what to do. Um, <laughs> but in the end, you know, I'll be happy about someone. So do you actually know anything about football? <laughs> Un poquito, very, very, very little. No, Brendan and Brendan knows the most out of out of my, you know group of cohorts you know joe is a good second place everything i've learned has been on has been on the fly uh, a lot of it through the experience of making the commercials the response to the commercials and then a lot of it now is from getting to go see one of the perks of filming over there getting to go see games uh matches and then playing a lot of fifa during the quarantine you know uh <laughs> lot, you know a lot more than olivia would like me to play but uh it's uh, it's the the little bit of social interaction that 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 we get, you know, well, it's playing with with friends. For season two, isn't exactly, it? exactly. I it's a tax write off too, right? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Do you support a British team at all? I know Brendan's a huge Arsenal fan. Huge Arsenal fan. I mean, in relation to him, no. I, I and I'm not even playing all, all sides. I, on P5, I have a tendency to pick Man City a lot. Man City and Liverpool. Um, you know. Um, but I also love their coaches too. But the, I would I would say I would say Man City because that's the team I picked the most, uh, and obviously a great time to be a fan of them. You know, I, I know how to pick them. Uh, but uh, yeah, in my early days of FIFA, I was a Man U guy. In 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 Brendan and I's early battles, he was Arsenal. It was just you know Henri versus Beckham till the cows came home. Uh, but but uh, but now yeah now I'll 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 you know I'll go anywhere. Every time we went to go see a match, I'd buy a new a new jersey. <laughs> you know, I buy one for me and one for my little boy. And, uh, you know, I got a nice drawer full of colors. No, I, I, I dislike it with a passion. <laughs> I, I mean, it, I, the thing is, I, it's, I don't, it sounds so cliche to say that, but actually this show, what, doing this show, though, has honestly, that, that sort of sense of camaraderie and team spirit that I think really, really was quite authentic within the cast. And 
the, the football players, you know, it, it really is infectious. And I, I wouldn't say that I'm a hardened football fan by any means, but I, but I appreciate, I appreciate why people are. And my dad's a huge football fan and I was immersed in it as a kid when I was growing up, but I just never, I never got it. It always straight over my head, but, um, but yeah, so I've got a kind of newfound appreciation of it. Um, a little. <laughs> so, so Brendan, would you say out of the two of you then that you know a lot more about football? Yeah, um, I would have to say a thousand percent, yes. But that is only yeah. due to Nick's absolute defiance of receiving any knowledge of football <laughs> in his previous life up to now. He's had to work yeah, well, at it. Yeah, yeah. Maybe if we get a season two, then I'll, I'll start swatting up on a few bits and pieces. I was going to say, did you, um, both of you, before you started, did you, knowing it was a f sort of show that touched on football, did you make sure you knew what the offside rule was? I, st st I still Thanks. don't know what it is. I still don't know <laughs> what it is. I know, I know that it's roughly something to do with if, the de if, if someone scores a goal or if the defender's in the wrong bit of the box. I, j I don't even know the, net the words I'm saying. Textbook, is that, that is exactly right. Yeah, if great. someone scores a goal and the defender goes offside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which one of the two of you is the better footballer in real life? <laughs> it's Juno. It's Juno. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually going to include her in. I was going to ask her if she thought she was better than the two of you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think I could play it in high heels, which just immediately puts me at a different level. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'd say that's fair. Yeah. No, we we both. The, who's the better? It, the question really for for this for the show is who had the better stunt double, really? Because then then those are the only people that were playing football. <laughs> yeah. <in this> show. <laughs> and and can't my can't stunt it. double was a fantastic, uh, a yeah. real top class. Uh, I didn't need him, but I thought you know the guy needs needs some work. He wants to earn a living, so I let him do a few. Yeah. It was a very altruistic a couple thing. of the things, yeah. For the, the series, did you do any um, football training or hang out with a, a football club beforehand? We we had a, we had a day, um, a couple of days where we would uh, we would like sort of run plays and uh, we would get to know each other through sort of just like playing games and, and just running drills. But we had Chris Powell uh, come in and sort of mentor us, which was like a to like the job in itself was amazing. But to have Chris Powell, ex yeah. England player ex uh, Charlton player, played in the Premier League, played against the likes of, I don't know, Cristiano Ronaldo, uh, was a t and he was just great. He was such good value for money. And Juno, I've got to ask, with um, your character, did you do any research? Did you like watch Footballers Wives or have you modelled yourself on a wag in particular? <laughs> it's funny, I've got, look, my best girlfriends growing up in London were always obsessed with Cheryl Cole. And so I knew quite a lot about Cheryl Cole. But obviously the thing that was interesting with playing Keeley is Cheryl Cole and Victoria Beckham, like the kind of wag moment when it was really, people were kind of obsessed with them and watching them and following them almost like a royal family, you know? Uh, I think that has slightly changed. So I think it was interesting playing Keeley and for Keeley to find a way for her to sort of feel relevant in a universe that has become Instagram and Twitter and something that's very different to what magazines used to be and how, you know, a footballer's mm. wife would maybe be photographed in a different way. And now it's about how they expose themselves through their um, social media, which obviously affects not just Keely, but everybody in the world. And sometimes for the greater good and sometimes for disastrous reasons, I think. And, uh, but it was quite interesting playing a kind of wag that is, in today's society, not sort of 10, 15 years ago, where they were this kind of, yeah, English royalty with bad mouths, mm -hmm. you know, and they were so hot and wearing the hottest little outfits and the greatest hair and like, but now, yeah, I think with with um, social media, everything is kind of slightly different there. So it was interesting. And also I think made Keely somebody that's kind of leaving that sort of image behind and becoming, a version of herself that uh, maybe she didn't think she was going to earlier in her life, you know, one that's where she's actually really smart and she's got a lot more in common with Rebecca than she might have thought initially, which was a really cool journey to have too. Yeah, I'm afraid you've got the best line in the entire series as far as I'm concerned. I've watched the mm -hmm. whole thing and the line, of info I'm not going to say it, but the one involving a splintered cricket bat, that's an insult. Oh. <laughs> My favourite line, and I've just got to say, was it fun being that sweary? 
you know what? I was that that line um, when I when I went in to meet for it. I was just like, this is the greatest role ever. Because <laughs> I thought, how many times have we thought that you'd actually like to do something equivalent to some a hole somewhere <laughs> who's treated you badly? And I just thought, if this is a sign of things to come. But actually, as it went further along, um, I actually used to check in with Jason and go, is she going to be this sweary? And he was like, oh, 100%. And I was like, okay. <laughs> okay. That's where she's really, really bitter. So we're just going to go for it. <laughs> Did you find um, that saying all that on screen, that then you would go home and you'd actually have to check yourself not to be as sweary when you got home? <laughs> oh, God, absolutely. And I was actually quite surprised that, that there is quite a lot of potty mouth in something that's for an American audience, because us Brits are definitely more <coughs> potty mouth than they are. We realised, you know, while we were filming it, just naturally yeah. we are. So, I mean, I did think to myself, I may be, you know, I was 46 yesterday, but I did think to myself, do I want my oh. parents listening to me swearing this one? <laughs> I, I love the way the two of you work as well. I mean, Jeremy, how would you describe yourself, your character in relation to, in relation to Rebecca? Uh, as I would describe him as being uh, cautious <laughs> <laughs> and never knowing quite how she's going to be <laughs> on any particular day because You're she's welcome. kind of... Um, <laughs> Uh, he's, uh, yeah, and he's a little bit clumsy as well by, you know, sort of sometimes like not turning up on time for work when she's really, really, you know, she's been up since six o'clock. Uh, so he's a little bit rubbish as well uh, on that level. But yeah, he's always got to be sort of on his guard. And I don't think he's got quite enough, you know, cards to play because he, he just doesn't know quite how to deal with her. Uh, but she's sort of recalibrating because, because he's guilty because he's guilty and he's confounded <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing that with my hands uh, yeah he's got this um, yeah he's got 4,000 children uh, to <laughs> sort of look after so he can't you know just say leave it I'm off so, it's exhausting uh, yeah. for him he is, he is clearly oh, a sexual is. beast who knew the other thing I loved about the show is how sweary it is. Oh, great. <laughs> was that fun to do? And I mean, did you find that, because all three of you are quite sweary in it, did you <laughs> find that when you went home, you had to be a bit careful not to carry on <laughs> swearing? It was Brett uh, improvising the whole time. That's what that yeah, was. That's yeah, just, that, that was just me <laughs> from home to work and back again. No, no real change there. This is a real struggle for me to do five minutes without. Uh, you slipped up once yeah. thus far, which is pretty good. Oh, have I? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, only, no, only once. You only did one, one swear word. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's pretty, it was a big it one, was, though, wasn't it? It was a big it one. Was, but it was great, though, because um, I had a, at the time I was living with a, with a Mancunian guy, and so Jamie Tart is from Manchester, and I would sort of text him at the start of the day, because uh, Jason and, and the whole writing team were really super up for people sort of feeling like it was sort of the, the words were sort of native to them and natural to them. Uh, and I would, I would sort of, each morning would would send him a text saying, "What's a good word for like sod off or like shut up or whatever?" And I got some real quiet things. I was like, I don't think I've ever heard that before, but, <laughs> but it's good. It sounds. Good. <laughs> One thing I loved about the show is it's so sweary. I thought that was absolutely brilliant. I actually started counting how many times she said that word, and I had to give up. I mean, it's. I yeah, don't make it a drinking game. Do not make it a drinking game. <laughs> Even Are if you're drinking pints, much less shots. Swearing of any show. Good, good. No, I think Apple pointed that out. Uh, pointed that out to us a couple times too throughout throughout editing. I think. It, I hope this show does anything. It teaches the <laughs> the Americans what <laughs> means exactly because they'll I get it the second she explains it. 